<laughs> yeah, we've got chicks in here. Oh, they're beautiful too. For the last eight years, Rob has studied the female and all her chicks that live in this hollow. He measures and marks each one and monitors their growth. This doesn't seem to upset the chicks or stop their mother from nurturing them. Our number one female, a star performer. She's just done what she typically does. She just produces healthy little guys like this and get a very good start for their long life in the rainforest. A good hollow is hard to find, and the female guards hers fiercely. We've spent a lot of time just watching her at the nest hollow. We've built hides in neighbouring trees, and we spent a lot of time in the treetops. And we just watched the female's behaviour. Rob's favourite female is not taking any chances with her hollow and doesn't budge for the entire nine-month breeding season. She is totally reliant on the male to bring her food. I feel like Males on Wheels. She's um, acting like an invalid, staying at home. Uh, the males are out there doing all of the work, coming and going all day long, purely for the right to, to regurgitate some food to her. And of course, they're hoping to get sex in return. But this female wasn't just being attended by one male. She was getting lots of attention. In fact, seven males were lining up to feed her. And she was mating with all of them. And we worked out that this was, in a way, a form of trickery. She was trying to give them the idea that they all had a chance of being the dads. and that would give them extra incentive to go off and find the food. But DNA tests on the chick's feathers reveal something astonishing. Of the 24 young she's produced in the last eight years, 19 are from the same super stud male. To complete the picture, Rob wanted to know how far the males were going on their feeding trips. We captured a whole lot of males and we put transmitters on their tails. We mounted aerials on the wings of the plane and we set out and followed them across country from the sky. Incredibly, the lovesick male gathered food from a home range of about 40 square miles. But it also turned out that he was attending more than one female. And some of them had three or four different females that they were visiting and feeding and indeed mating with. So by following them around at the landscape, we actually caught them out playing a little mating game of their own. After visiting their girlfriends, the males fly back to Rob's favorite female. Males often come back to the nest tree at the same time. And when that happens, there's a lot of argy-bargy. With such different lifestyles, the huge color difference between the sexes makes a lot of sense. The male's green. It's very important for them to bring camouflage when they go across country, getting food from the fruiting trees. Males seem to use the red under their wings very judiciously to get the female's attention. In contrast, the female's red is a very conspicuous, long-distance signal. She shines like a beacon, but screams at other birds, especially females. Keep away. This hollow is occupied. Don't bother coming near because I will beat you up. No other bird in the world mates like this. It's a sex strategy that's been perfected over an incredibly long time in these ancient forests. While the eclectists were doing their thing, elsewhere on the continent, dramatic changes gave rise to a whole new range. 